Hello, thanks everyone for joining. Today, I'm going to show off nil transfer. Nil transfer is a proof of concept. It's a prototype that we're using to demonstrate some of the capabilities of the Nillion network within a web browser. It is not a product that we're planning on releasing. So in nil transfer, we do have the node is running inside the browser. It's gonna connect directly through the testnet through our integration. You don't have to get uh, set up additional infrastructure or web services in order to proxy communication to the network. It happens through our WASM package through libp 2 p I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. The features that we're gonna see here today is the storage and the retrieval actions. We do have other proof of concepts that demonstrate additional features like Nil Messenger, which has additional capabilities like updates of secrets and permissions and users which we'll show in another video. So let me tell you a little bit about nil transfer. Nil transfer is a React application. And as such, we have, uh, it's, it's put together and built with uh, Gatsby JS. It has uh, kind of a standard React build to it. And we've installed the NPM package that's an output from our Nillion build process that creates a WASM output that has JavaScript bindings for it, uh, packaged all up in an NPM, sent to our private repository for now, and uh, installed as part of my project here that I've built. And I've deployed this to a single page website on S3. And let me show you a few things that's going on here. We've got on this terminal, uh, I've tunneled into our data center to run our uh, Grafana. I'll show you that in a second. And then I have a logging receiver, which is simply a, a WebSocket receiver where I can view logs that are getting emitted from the JavaScript million client. So on the Grafana outputs that we have here, we, we might be able to see some of the consumption of the alphas and blinding factors um, as we're doing the storage event. Um, but this is a kind of a, a standard dashboard that we put together um, to monitor the testnet itself and to see what kinds of application level activity is happening there. Um, what else can I tell you? I am going to be sending a file from here in California over to Charlie in London in the UK. And I'm ready to start the upload. So first thing, I'm going to select the file. And here we go. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more detail on this later, but what we're doing is we're downloading shares from the network. We're creating blinding exponents from those. We're applying those to the data to create our particles. We're uploading the particles to the network. Um, and then the network was going to respond back with the storage ID. That storage ID is then constructed into this link that I got here. And I'm going to share this with Charlie on our no messenger. So I pop over here, paste that link, send that link off. And in a moment, Charlie is going to take that uh, and commence his download on the other side of the planet. Here we go. Hello, everyone. This is Charlie. So you previously had Nick go through the details of the upload process for no transfer. And as you can see, I am over in the UK here in, here in London, and Nick has sent me the file. So if I go into my nil messenger, I can simply copy that file across that he has sent me and grab that like that, then go it over to my Google, just copy that in. And then as you can see, I can now unlock the secret file. So I can see the name of the file. Let me just hit download. And there you go. So that happened very, very quickly. You can see there are all the unpackaging of all the data, the shares are downloaded, the blind and exponents are reconstructed, the particle data is then downloaded, the secret data reconstructed, and the secret data is assembled. Now, that happened in the blink of an eye, but I'm going to pass it back over to Nick now, and he is going to go into how the store and retrieval process works in more detail. All right, so let me go into the storage and retrieval functions in a little bit more detail. So when we first load 
the Nilian JavaScript client, it's going to connect to those boot nodes. The boot nodes are going to share pure information on the network describing the cluster. The browser, again, it's a node inside the browser, so we're connecting directly to that testnet. We're not using those intermediates. So you can see here in the code snippet of this website, I am monitoring for the file upload. And once the upload is completed, so the file is then encoded into our secret blob type. And then this secret is then passed into the storage operation. So the store is very, it, it's a simple operation from the perspective of the JavaScript client, but under the hood, it's doing all those activities that we spoke of before. It's asking the network for blinding factor shares. It's creating a blinding exponent from those, uh, those shares. And then it's applying the blending exponent to the file to create the particles. And then those particles are shared back to the network. And then network provides a UUID. I'm then using that UUID, which is the result that you see here, passing it the file name, the size, and, and the data type. I'm encoding a URL that's what is getting shared with Charlie so that he can reconstruct the file on his end and it passes that extra metadata in a convenient way for us so that uh, it can properly download how we want. So let's look at the retrieval operation. Retrieval starts the same in Charlie's browser. He started up the Nilian client. It joined the network. It was informed about the peers and it, the code's a little simpler on this retrieve type. So I have that UUID that's identifying the secret on our network and the, the cluster that we're using. And in that single operation, we're doing kind of the reverse or similar operation, I would say. Uh, we're, we're getting the particle and the blinding factors back from the network. And using those, we're able to reconstruct the blinding exponent. And with the original particles and the blinding exponent, we can reconstruct the file. Now that I have the secret back from the network, I'm passing that into the decode byte array function, uh, which will then, the, my result now contains uh, a JavaScript native byte array. So that byte array, I then pass into my function with the name that we passed in previously so that we can have a named file download that you see it in Charlie's download section. So that's everything. We've seen the store action. We've seen the retrieve action in other videos, such as no messenger. We're going to show other capabilities as we continue to add them to the Nillion network and the, the different Nillion uh, proof of concept and proof of tech. So I hope you come back and check those out. And if you have any questions or comments, please put them below the video and we'll get to them as soon as we can. Thanks again for watching.